And finally tonight, we have yet another in an ongoing rash of Australian pedophile stories. We've covered pedophile Australian Catholics and pedophile Australian Jews in the last few weeks, so it's only fitting that we add a story about a pedophile Australian Muslim to round the Abrahamic child-fucking trifecta out. Wouldn't want to get offensive. Exactly. Joining us to do so and possibly shed some light on what kind of child-fucking hormones they're putting in the Australian drinking water is genuine Australian Adam Reeks from the Herd Mentality Podcast. Adam, welcome back to the show. Greetings. Thank you. Let me put down my coffee and pick up some tap water. <laughs> And since, unlike most of the Australian pedophile stories we've been covering recently, this one involves a female, we thought we'd also bring on a genuine female, Ra, Ooh. also from the Herd <laughs> Mentality Podcast. Exotic. Ra, welcome to The Scathing Atheist. Thank you for having me. This, now, I believe this would be your first time on a podcast award-nominated show, isn't it? <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? It's exciting. Um, I don't know. I don't listen to any of them at all. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. We're the one with Neil deGrasse Tyson, then. Right. <laughs> well, uh, I just think any any podcast that has me on it, I, I won't be listening to it because it's shit. <laughs> Such low standards. And a awesome. fair judge, too. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I, I just <laughs> hope that you put that on an iTunes review for us. Um, now, so basically the story we've got here, this is essentially the classic story of a Lebanese Muslim residing in Australia who asked himself one day, what would Muhammad do? And since the historically accurate answer is fuck a preteen, that's exactly what he did. Of course, as a good Muslim, he wanted to make an honest pederast victim out of her, so he married her first and then raped her. So, Adam, I want to start with you because I really don't know the laws in your hemisphere there. Is it legal to fuck seventh graders in Australia? Great Only if you do it legally. <laughs> and, okay, all right, all right, that makes sense, that makes sense, which apparently he didn't manage to get away with here because uh, he's, he's been convicted, and for some reason, and maybe you actually can shed some light on this, do you know why they're withholding the assailant's name? Is that, like, typical in Australia for a guy who's already uh, been convicted? I can't speak to that. Why? Well, probably because the clear-thinking majority of Australians would probably want to track him down and do terrible, terrible things to him, ISIS style. It's... Look, to be fair to the guy, it wasn't just a case of marrying her and then uh, doing hor horrible things to her. He at least went to the trouble of stalking her. Yes. Quite, uh, quite a bit, you know, just to kick the relationship off, get the things off to a good start. So, uh, look, I guess he's to be commended for at least trying before succeeding, not just being given all the success straight up. Wow. Well, yeah, I guess I guess he's trying harder than the Catholics generally. Way to put a, a positive spin on it. Now, Ra, I know that uh, you're not in a Muslim country, but according to Fox News, you are. Uh, so well, you obviously <laughs> haven't been to Birmingham. Sure, exactly. To well, I'm not allowed. You're not allowed to go there. <laughs> so, so uh, as as a uh, a woman in a Muslim country, wh where do you stand on prepubescent betrothal? Are you for or against? Um, well, you know, I I would think you would. Who's you know, it's not my kids, I just start laughing. Um, no, I am completely against it. It's abhorrent and vile. It's, it, it's, it's, it, the giggle is not exactly selling abhorrent and vile, but I'm going to take your word on it. So, <laughs> now, of, <laughs> making it worse. Yeah, of course, the. <laughs> Russ just had. I'm just a bit nervous because of that nine year old I'm keeping in the basement for oral sex, but yeah, go on. <laughs> Joining us live from Austria. <laughs> well, the younger you get, too. I mean, when they're still teething, it's a lot easier to get oh, God. without as much pain. Oh, I'm just saying, like, if, you, if you're already disgusting, why not push it all the way down? Whatever. In case anybody was wondering who was going to go further with the child fucking story, it was going to be Heath. No surprise there. So now, of course, the real horror of the story isn't the wedding so much as the statutory rape that it preceded. The victim slash bride got pregnant shortly after their wedding night, and because she's a fucking kid, she miscarried. So, no, this is not one of those pederast stories with a happy Should've ending, unfortunately. Should have got a preemie now, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> So now I, I'm sure a lot of the audience is, is probably asking themselves, you know, hey, how does one go about marrying a 12-year-old Muslim girl in Australia? But don't worry, they're just asking for a friend. Um, now, as you said, Adam, it, I believe step one was stalking her incessantly. It wins young hearts over. It's, I guess so. We, we have a system in Australia where uh, marriages are required to be presided over by uh, people who are endorsed, you know, credible and mm -hmm. legally recognised. Uh, so right. once all the stalking took place and hearts were won over, the gentleman went and spoke to his uh, 
the sheik of choice, perhaps, got knocked back uh, because the first one <laughs> was rational and said, ah, no, you, no that's illegal. Uh, tried a couple and found one in presumably some garage somewhere who said, yeah, I'll marry you to a nine-year-old girl. No problems. Come here. 12 year old. 12, be uh, 12, fair. Sorry, 12 year old. <laughs> yeah, she, a, a complete, uh, she's an old maid compared to Aisha. She's know? like middle school already. Yeah. <laughs> so now, what I found most interesting about this story, before we get to the, before he got to the imam anyway, that, that, that finally would marry him, according to the story, he got help from a member of her family. It didn't specify what. So I'm just wondering how that conversation, you know, like you, you got to walk up to some guy at, uh, at, at Temple or whatever, whatever they have, mosque or whatever, and you go, uh, so that, uh, that niece of yours. Sure is filling out that training bra nicely. You think you could uh, put in a good word? I mean, like, just what kind of sick fucking bastard says, oh, yeah, 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 no, I'll, what are you, 27? Yeah, I'll hook you up with my 12-year-old no, niece. Do you realize who you're talking to? The, we, both Ra and I are, by your uh, description there, sick bastards. But we're also very good at a little bit of role play. So if you would like us to play, say, the parents... <laughs> Of this young child. Parents, she, no, I want to be. I want to be the child bride. Uh, yeah, but, but you don't have. An, you don't get a say. <laughs> this is just, I'll get some well, say. if you're the child bride, then you're definitely uh, uh, not getting a say. Is definitely getting you into character. You're gonna have some really weird lines. Hey, can you put on a woman's voice? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I'll it see what I can do. Thursday. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now that's going to be the opening of the show right there. So now it's important to point out that, like, at, you know, like I said, no happy ending here, but at least the guy went to jail. Um, and I think this is a coincidence, but he is uh, eligible for parole right around her 18th birthday. So, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, but he won't be interested in her by then. She'll have pubes. That's the. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. It's the world's biggest <laughs> happy ending, really. <laughs> yeah, all right. So and then of course the the imam you said that you know you went to a couple of them that told told them hey you know you can't do that unfortunately none of them said you know hey I'm gonna call the police if you don't mind sitting right there um, but eventually he did find an imam that would do it and he also got punished now tell me this isn't some light shit he had his visa revoked and he was fined five hundred dollars <laughs> for aiding and abetting and statutory rape now that's by the way five hundred Australian dollars it's well, like seven bucks American of uh, twenty thousand <laughs> Tajikistani and pebbles so it's not very much at all so now what do you guys use in in, in England Roz? it it's squids hay pennies what do you guys have <laughs> money wise oh uh, no we just use gold <laughs> <laughs> yeah just running that's, like John Gold with right? a picture with a picture of the Queen's clunge on it. Regina is actually <laughs> vagina in Latin. <laughs> Nice, okay. nice. Sorry. To know. Now you understand what I have to do on the editing front. Whenever so you guys, oh, but see, the, the thing is that that kind of shit gets edited out of your show, Adam, <laughs> not ours. <laughs> the, the the clunge jokes never go. Um, so now, so basically, what you're saying is you haven't updated your monetary units since America updated their units of measure, and that's I think commendable, you know. Yeah, we're yeah, sticking we like, with it. We like it. tradition, like you know, like Muslims like child rape. Well, not all Muslims. Oh dear, here we go. I sort of generalized. Uh, not all Muslims. Some Muslims like Some Muslims child rape. Muslims like child rape. Be fair. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, but the, but they all like child rapists, though. That's that's one hundred percenter because they yes. all seem to like that well, Muhammad they, fellow. They like you know the ultimate child rapist, don't they? That's it, right. who they revere. It's not a child rapist, it's the child All rapist. All other Get child it. rapists must bow before Mohammed. I married a nine-year-old in a big book. It's really famous. <laughs> not well, really at least, that big of a at least Mohammed had the decency to marry her, whereas uh, the Christian side of things, God was just there for the fun, messy bit at the beginning and then wasn't seen since. Yeah, well. well, and of course, priests continue to rape children. Yeah, it's a time you know, If, if, if um, little boys could get pregnant, the Catholic Church would open a franchise of abortion clinics. Well, now that's that's probably going <laughs> to solve the problem there with their prehistoric views on abortion. We just need to find a way to make 12 year get little boys, boys pregnant. pregnant. Orally, yeah. It's, All right. it's, it's not for lack of trying. <laughs> get him a latte or something. <laughs> Hey, you can't get pregnant up the ass or in the mouth. I know this because that's my form of contraception. <laughs> and I'm still childless now. Well, there you go. Now, 
this, as I said, is part of an ongoing series we've been doing on Australians fucking children. And now, this one, it, this would not go before Australia's Royal Commission into the institutional responses to child sex abuse, would it? Because it's just the, the one fella? Well, no, this is only a very, very minor case. I mean, you can tell by the punishment. See you later. Apparently. And give me $500. It's funny you should say that there is so much going on in Australia with this Royal Commission into child abuse. And it spans from does, does high sense. schools to uh, orphanages to religious wow. schools. Jesus. And it is just enormous. There is every day, you cannot open the paper without a story like this being on the front page. It's horrendous and it spans back 50 years. Now, the vast majority, the vast majority of it is, shall we say, religiously motivated mm-hmm. and terrifying. There you go. Well, so no, my, 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 my question to you is, do you think that the ineffectiveness of this royal commission is, has anything to do with the fact that you don't have royalty? In Australia, I mean, are, no. Are you guys still borrowing in England's king, or do you guys yeah, do you guys have like? Yeah, Lizzie's still that bitch. <laughs> I the... believe it's that they're still Lizzie's bitch, but uh... well, you too... know, but what I mean, they're royal bitch. I see. I see. Diffic- Don't you guys have Google in America, dumb cunts? <laughs> Well, you know, I went, I went on Incredulous <laughs> once, and I got bitched at for Googling, and I just haven't done it since. So I'm just trying to keep myself safe, get some more Incredulous wins under my belt. Now, there is actually kind of a larger question uh, around this whole thing, and I think um, I'd like to shift that a little bit and talk about the issue that this story represents, which is these these insular religious communities – and the feelings within them that the religious custom somehow supersedes national law. And obviously we've got this uh, in the U.S. We've got plenty of them. I've seen some terrifying re- reports out of the U.K. with regards to the ubiquity of female genital mutilation in, in the Muslim population there. Obviously Australia's got some of this problem. So my question to you guys, and this is just sort of an open question, trying to get a bit, a bit of a discussion going. Uh, what do you think is the right national approach? Should we be trying to respect the culture? Should we be trying to integrate the culture? Should we go full France and just try to outlaw the culture? What do you, what do you guys feel is the right direction there? Well, this is what's currently being brought to light by the Royal Commission in Australia. We're now mopping up from the last, oh God, 60, 80 odd years of abuses of human rights. And from that, we'll begin developing new laws, new protection, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, so on and so forth. So, uh, do we go full France? I don't think that's the answer. Telling people what to wear is certainly not the answer. Telling people what to believe is not the answer. You can guide them in the right direction, but no, it's a really curly one. Tempting to say yes, believe what I believe, but then that makes me no different to these insular religious communities. That Except we're... that you're against child rape. Yeah, that would be the <laughs> Yes, by and large, not a fan of that. So, Well, I was going to say, I certainly have no problem with telling people to believe as I believe, but forcing them, I think, is, is what you're, you're talking more about. And, and yeah, certainly I'd be willing to force that. them on this issue. I think I'm Well, on this willing. issue, yes, absolutely. Secular laws, if they were adhered to, we'd all be happy, wouldn't we, by and large? Yeah, pretty good. That'd be a pretty good start. <laughs> yeah, and it'd make for very, very boring podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that would put me out of uh, out of work altogether. Yeah, honestly, it's Thursday, so. secular humanism still works, and that's it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Would make it a lot easier to write, though. But Ra and I often speak off-air about the horrendous FGM issue that's taking place, because where Ra is based in the UK is chock-a-block full of this Somali community where it seems labias and clitori are seen as highly prized <laughs> objects for taxidermists over there. Isn't that what they do with them? Can I just wow. say, when you, when you correctly use the uh, plural of clitoris, it makes my clitoris happy, just saying. <laughs> Both of them. I, I love, yes, <laughs> it makes my clitori happy. <laughs> I do love grammar. Love a um, Latinized pluralization that's so hot. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh, it's hot in here, but it's probably because I haven't taken my HRT. <laughs> anyway. Um <laughs> yes, there is a huge problem of um FGM where I work especially because there's a huge um sort of African uh, Muslim population and I see victims of, of FGM on a on a regular basis which you know brings me to answering um 
your question about should we respect other cultures and try and integrate. I mean, I, I don't think it's black or white. I think it's uh, shades of grey. Yes, it would, you know, I'm, I'm not um, a fan of, for example, banning the burqa. That to me seems quite extremist um, because you're banning women to wear something which they may choosely, choosely? Wow, what a word. They may choose to do, to do it so freely, which, yes, I know a lot of women would not wear you know, the burqa freely, maybe but something some that's do. forced upon them. Sure. But some do, and it seems a little bit draconian to me to then say, well, you can't wear that because it's oppressive. Well, that sounds to me a little bit oppressive too, dictating what people can't, you know, and can wear. Uh, to customs, yeah, <laughs> when it comes to customs and traditions, which inflicts, you know, a a degree of harm onto people. So FGM, for example, I understand it isn't a Muslim tradition, but unfortunately in the UK, and I can only speak to the UK, it is 99% only practiced by Muslim communities, certainly where I am anyway. No, but I'm, I'm glad that you made that point, though, because I think a lot of people don't recognize the fact that there are a lot of Christian cultures in Africa that practice FGM as well. So yes, I oh, absolutely, it's yeah. it's not it's not a it's not an Islamic thing. Um, it's a religious. Hang on, but hang on. It, Everybody here sounds like Reza Aslan all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to dispute that <laughs> because I I did research the statistics on the countries that are performing FGM, and statistically. The countries with the highest FGM rates in Africa are the Islamic nations. Yes, oh, yeah, you know, that's it's Islamic in origin. That's what I'm trying to say. FGM mm -hmm. isn't Islamic in origin. So it's it would be dishonest to say this is an exclusively Islamic practice because there are other religions that do it. So it's not just Islam. And like I said, in, in Bristol, where I live, um, all the patients that I see that are victims of FGM happen to be Muslim. So I would say it's, you know, practiced in the UK mostly by Muslims. I've never come across a non-Muslim victim of FGM. So, yes, this is what I was trying to say before. It's, you know, it, it isn't black and white. There are certain things that need to be contested. It needs to be challenged. And we have to get away from this idea that we must preserve cultural traditions and feelings for the sake of not upsetting people. Because if you don't speak out against these, these atrocities, that's when children are forced into marriage and raped and have their genitals mutilated and a number of other, you know, hideous, grotesque practices. So yes, integration is great, but th there are limits. You know, you don't, you have to move on and, and you have to adapt, and that does mean leaving behind barbaric practices and jo joining the twenty first century. Which is something that religion is really very, That's... very bad at. Yeah, you know? <laughs> not exactly their thing. Yeah, I, I am. I, I just, I'm trying not to imagine a day at work for you where you're seeing this sort of thing on a regular basis. That's got to be just terrible. Um, also trying not to picture this wedding in general. Um, right. <laughs> pretty depressing in general. But despite our best efforts, here we are talking about it, and it's nearly impossible to ignore the purple elephant dressed in a tuxedo getting legal permission to rape a 12-year-old, so we're talking about it. You know, because we're extremely twisted people, we started considering what kind of music would be most appropriate for this wedding venue. And That's did we? We did. <laughs> we did. And that means we're going to need 30 seconds on the clock. Ding, ding, ding. We're going to be looking for songs to play at a Muslim pedophile wedding go all right all right well yeah adam might need these you know he's, he's looking for work that doesn't involve slinging refrigerators so he could be <laughs> a muslim pedophile wedding entertainer he's sexy you got any ideas adam, <laughs> songs for the muslim pedophile wedding look i'm a big fan of uh too. so what about where the fetus has no name <laughs> See, now, I was thinking, uh, since this is in Australia, I was thinking Band Down Under by High Men at Work. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Down Under, um, everyone's favourite convicted sex offender, Rolf Harris. Uh, I can do a decent timey kindergartner down. <laughs> uh, say I'd go with um, Sweet Child of Mine. That would definitely be on there. Um, thank heavens for little girls. <laughs> like a virgin. Yeah, yeah. And like 71 other girls, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Ramadana, that's a famous one. That's <laughs> famous one. My, my favorite would have to be, girl, you'll be a woman soon. And by soon, I mean another 15 years. <laughs> Well played. Well played. And for definitely for the honeymoon, um, to get them into the mood, uh, don't go breaking my hymen. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't if I tried. <laughs> if I tried. I'll stretch out the edges, but I won't hit the back. <laughs> You'll enjoy, I'm girthy. I'm girth. I'm a girth man. <laughs> I've had a little Beatles number. Uh, I get hitched with a little help from my shake. Oh, oh nice. nice. What about a pedophile I'll follow the Sunni? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Losing My Decision by FGM. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about, a, what about a little grunge movement? How about a Swells Like Tween Spirit by Pervana? Oh, oh nice. Fuck. Or maybe I'm gonna party like it's nine ninety nine by the artist formerly known as Amir. <laughs> oh. This is th- this one's actually a sponsor of our show at one point. Uh, Isis Isis Baby. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stop the caliphate and listen. Oh, how about MC Hammers can't touch this um, because I'm only six years old. <laughs> or or maybe yeah, M M U Hummids shouldn't touch this. <laughs> Smashing pumpkin patch customers, a silver foot with oh, horse whips. Wow! <laughs> Went Fifty Shades of Grey at the end. How about Truly Madly Feloniously by Savage Kindergarten? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the Australian singer too, from memory. Yeah, I was thinking uh, something by uh, Billy Billy Idolater. Uh, maybe uh, um. Robin the Cradle of Love or uh, Nicest Day for a Tight Wedding, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I had I like this one too because it rhymes. How about "Bloke on the Daughter" by Deep Pervert? <laughs> nice, but that's strange. Get my Australian well, in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know what? I, I've got a variation on one of Ra's. I, I enjoyed your uh, Guns and Roses reference particularly very much. Um, this this variation is actually from the Little Orphan Irani soundtrack. It's a uh, s- Street Child of Mine. Oh, street, oh, street child, yes. little orphan Irani. Oh, and a Broadway touch makes the cut as well. There, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, or and and how about at least she's not his cousin by Jerry Lee Lewis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Eagles, uh, no life in the shaft lane. <laughs> or maybe uh, maybe the Red Hot Children Poppers with Caliph fornication. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe a little diddle miss, little miss can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the, the gin doctor. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to sing you one. Would you, like, would you like one in song? Oh, of course. Fantastic. It's because uh, I'm a big Cindy Lauper <laughs> fan. I woke up to a morning prayer. My husband says, when you're going to grow you some hair. Oh, <laughs> Too young to need food. Oh, girls just need to have pubes. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Can you change my name when you broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I was, I'm kind of hoping nobody else has any more because I really want to end on. We we'll probably want to wrap it up. Probably want to wrap it up. Probably a good idea. Well, can well I done, say sir. Something? Wow. We've got to be uh-huh. mindful of the wedding guests. Um, from the bride's family, so you've got to have age-appropriate songs. So make sure you've got, you've got a Sesame Street soundtrack. Right, right. They'll all be from Kinji. Mm-hmm. Yeah, w- wheels on the bus and, so, and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They'll love the hokey pokey. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You, uh, ruined your outfit. Pe- and, and and the sort of games will be, you know, pin the penis on the pedo instead of <laughs> pin the tail on the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to know that we don't just play that game in America. Well, Adam, I know you've got some sharks to wrestle, and Ra, I'm sure you're busy avoiding Muslim no-go zones, but we do really appreciate you taking some time out to chat with us tonight. Thank you very much for having me. I can't speak for Ra. <laughs> of course, if you'd like to hear more from our guests, you can check out the Herd Mentality podcast. You'll find it on iTunes, Stitcher, and, of course, linked on the show notes for this episode at skatingatheist.com. And, of course, for more vulgar hilarity, be sure to follow Ra at Franco Soup on Twitter. Thanks again, guys. Take care.